Welcome to the Come Up Starter Kit, guys. This show is all about taking your career from zero to 100 real quick. If you are lost, confused, or just plain stuck, I'm here to help. Now, who am I? I'm Shane Kapilai, your soon-to-be favorite career coach. With over seven years experience in the recruitment game, there's nothing I haven't seen, and I help people just like you land that dream job. In each episode, we'll speak to one of my friends who's done something a little bit different in their career. We'll go along the journey and understand what they've done that's made them so successful. Along the way, I'll give you tips and tricks to help you with your own very come up. Let's get it. Welcome to the Come Up Starter Kit, guys. My name is Shankar, and I have a very special guest with me today, Daniel Vizar, who is the founder and creator of Wicked Witch Software. He has created games such as AFL2 and the Ages of Empire 2 DE. Thank you so much, Daniel, for jumping on board. No worries, Shankar. Nice to be here. Good to be talking to you. Wonderful. Now, Daniel, if you could give the audience a quick summary of who you are, that would be great. So I started making video games when I was about six years old, when my parents gave me a Commodore 64 for Christmas, and I basically just fell in love with, with video games uh, back then. Space Invaders, Pac-Man, that was the kind of games we were playing. Uh, before long, I started to just tinker around with the computer and uh, taught myself programming uh, in the language basic. I've made my own games, shareware titles uh, for various computers right through primary school and high school. After that, I went to college at Swinburne for a couple of years, studied computer programming, I then went and worked at Melbourne House, a big studio in, in Melbourne, uh, as a programmer and a lead programmer. Um, and then we started working for a company out of the UK. And that was kind of how um, Wicked Witch got started, just out of my study and out of my garage, uh, making games for um, a company overseas. And from then, um, I've just been lucky to be surrounded by you know, good friends and like-minded people, and we've been make, making games as Wicked Witch ever since. Okay, wonderful. And for people that might not know what Wicked, Wicked Witch software is, how would you describe that? It's probably best summed up as um, doing console sports and mobile free-to-play. Uh, we also do co-developments on bigger projects such as Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, uh, working with Mattel on games for franchises like Whack-A-Mole and Warhammer and uh, things like that as well, uh, amongst other things. Okay, perfect. And what was your motivation for starting Wicked Witch Software? That's a good question. So originally it was kind of to be in control of our own destiny and uh, to kind of, you know, not have a boss, I suppose, uh, at, the, at the start to make games that we wanted to make, create our own original ideas, and to uh, basically kind of, you know, live the indie dream. All right, guys, what we're gonna do in the next session is sit down with Daniel and pick his brains all around his career. Sure. So Daniel, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. What I wanted to do was give the audience a feel of what is it like to create a game? All right, um, look, it varies uh, from project to, to project, but first we get the brief uh, and we will um, know what the game is about, what the characters are, uh, what the setting is, and what the core mechanics are, what kind of game it is. Is it a role-playing game? Is it a shooter? Is it a puzzle game? Uh, we take that brief. We then go into a project planning stage where we uh, will estimate how long each one of those uh, activities will take, what the team looks like, uh, what they're gonna be doing, and we kind of plot that out in a, a Gantt chart, uh, which turns into a, like a, a project plan. Uh, and then we're into production. Uh, first, we plan out uh, the time, how long it's gonna take to do all of those things, how many characters we have to make, how many weapons, how many shields, how many spells, uh, how many trees, how many rocks, we get down to that granular level. Uh, is it day, is it night, you know, uh, all the moving parts of, of a video game. We work out and we come up with a high level schedule. Uh, and then we start making the art and doing the programming. Uh, that's the big chunk in the middle. And creating the characters, animating them, uh, and doing the code. Uh, making the characters move, making the worlds load up. Um, there's a lot of milestones along the way. Uh, the first one is typically a prototype or a first playable where you can kind of, you know, it might just be gray boxed and things missing, but initially, you know, a, a character running around in a world, if that's the kind of game it is. Uh, and then we move through uh, through the functionality, you know, then you can run and jump, uh, then you can shoot if it's a shooting game. And then we'll have the enemies, and then we'll have the first world, the second world, the third world. Uh, eventually we get to a milestone that we call Alpha. Uh, we've pretty well got all the content in place and you can play from the game start to finish. There might be a few bits missing uh, or and a bunch of bugs present, no doubt. 
we then kind of uh, iterate and uh, make sure the game is fun to play. We probably test it uh, on some people during, during that process as well. After Alpha, we start refining all the rough edges uh, to a beta milestone. Beta means that the game is pretty well finished, uh, but there are bugs present. And this is where kind of quality assurance and testing comes in, uh, and we just play the game over and over. Uh, and we kind of tweak it, fix bugs, uh, make some small uh, additions or changes along the way. After that, we get the game ready for submission to go onto the stores or to get made onto a, a, a disc. Um, we uh, have to go through what's called technical requirement checklist, uh, which is a, a grueling part of the process where we have to make sure that you know controllers uh, can sign in and out properly. Uh, the thing saves games. You can migrate your save game. What happens when you lose internet connection during the game? all of these kind of technical requirements. And then we go into what we call Gold Master or getting what we call a release candidate ready. So um, we then submit it to Microsoft or Sony or Nintendo uh, and they do a thing called a technical requirements checklist, which means make sure that you know the controllers work and you can tab between and what happens when you lose internet connection. Make sure all those things are right. Then it gets submitted, certified, ready for release. After that, the game isn't quite finished then. Uh, often there is a patch or an update uh, and maybe downloadable content or live operations uh, go forward after that. In a nutshell, that is the development process. Okay, and how long can a game take to create? Sure, uh, it ranges. Again, if you've got just a simple noughts and crosses game, maybe that can be done in you know, a month, two months, three months, depending on how simple it is. Uh, traditionally, uh, a small free-to-play mobile puzzle game might be 9 to 12 months. Um, an average size console game is more like 12 to 24 months. Uh, but a big RPG or a big shooter or something like that, we're talking two, three, maybe four years or more. Okay. And what is the hardest aspect when creating a game? The uh, hardest aspect is probably um, managing your vision for the game and as great as you want to do it uh, and kind of the trade-offs with the, uh, uh, the cost and the time restraints that, that we have on us. And for people that want to get into gaming, what are the programming languages that they need to know? Sure, uh, it, does, it does change. Um, what changes more, I would say, is the software packages that are used. Uh, languages do change, but traditionally it's still C++ and C Sharp. Uh, maybe there's some assembler coding, uh, maybe there's some Python scripting. Uh, for the most part, that's what we use. Um, software packages and middleware and tools. Uh, we use Unreal Engine for a lot of our game development. Um, that's a good package to be familiar with. Uh, then there's the art side, which is um, equally as important. Uh, there's 2D artwork, concept work, photo manipulation. Um, vector drawing with something like um, Adobe Illustrator is uh, something that we use uh, a fair bit. And then on the 3D side, uh, there's tools for sculpting and modeling like 3D Studio Max or Maya or Blender. Uh, and then animation uh, as well is another big part uh, that has Motion Builder and different applications like that. There's other roles like design, which is building levels and you know uh, placing enemies and placing props and shrubs and things like that. Uh, there's writing, narrative writing, where um, we kind of have like a script uh, that gets written uh, for you know characters, NPCs to, to talk to you and give you your quests and give you your challenges. On the sound side, there's uh, multiple tools uh, available, whether you're compositing music or whether you're uh, making Foley sound effects. Uh, you know, there's, uh, we use uh, Sony SoundForge for sound effects. Uh, we tend to use Pro Tools for more of the music and, uh, and editing. Adobe Premiere for video uh, and uh, trailer construction. Um, QA, quality assurance, is a big part of it as well, and that's the uh, basically the testing of the games, uh, from gameplay testing through to making sure the thing doesn't break, uh, through to the technical requirements uh, that I mentioned. And then there's the whole project management uh, uh, kind of side as well. So we use Atlassian and Jira for project managing. We use Microsoft Project for Gantt charts, the whole office suite, uh, knowing your Excels, knowing your uh, Word documents, uh, how to manipulate them and use them correctly. Google Sheets, um, all of these things, and generally being computer literate uh, on things like source control and you know using the cloud and uh, you know collaborative workspace environments and using Discord to communicate. 
Um, there's a range, but uh, I think that covers off uh, a bunch of the basics. So for a typical day for someone that was working for you, what would a day look like? Sure, uh, it depends on where the project is in, in production. Um, early on um, uh, uh, is probably you know, one of the more fun parts uh, of the process where you're kind of uh, um, you know, designing and brainstorming and coming up with ideas and coming up with cool characters or monsters or enemies and you know, coming up with uh, exciting plot lines and things like that. Uh, we then go into um, project planning, so uh, again, it's a very collaborative uh, thing. Everyone would come in on, uh, on day to day and uh, start estimating, oh, I think it would take this long to build a character, <clears throat> it'll take this long to build a weapon, uh, and how many of those are we going to have? We kind of, you know, roughly size up the project and how long it's going to take. And then in production, the day to day, um, if, if you're a programmer, um, you, you come to work, uh, you've got your programming tasks, uh, you might be working on bullets, uh, you know, shooting uh, for a week, two weeks, three weeks to, to write that system. Uh, if you're an artist or an animator, you might be animating main character, so you're doing the jump. The next day you're doing a run, the next day you're doing uh, somebody you know, uh, dying or respawning. Um, and then when we get towards the end, an average day probably looks like checking over your work, seeing if there are any mistakes, making tweaks, making changes, and then trying that again. Okay, and how important is teamwork? in this organisation, or if, even if you want to work in gaming? Yeah, good question, Chenka. Teamwork uh, is paramount. Like, it's a collaborative exercise with multi-disciplines. You've got programmers talking to artists, working with production, working with QA and testing. Um, uh, that's why we have a big open office here with uh, no walls. We're all kind of in a big room, separated into teams, uh, and everyone's communicating uh, every, every day. We have uh, usually a daily stand-up call where we have a bit of a huddle uh, at the start of the day and we kind of work out what we're going to be doing, what we want to achieve for the day. Uh, every two weeks, roughly, we do what we call some sprint planning, where we work out what the next chunk of work is going to be and we all talk about what we think we can achieve in that. At the end of those two weeks, we do a presentation and we, we show the team what we what we got done uh, and then we plan the, the next sprint. And do you guys work in an agile environment here? Uh, we do embrace the Agile methodology, uh, good question again. Uh, it's actually a trade-off between what they call waterfall, uh, planning the project out with milestones, but in amongst that um, there's Agile where thing, things absolutely have to move. Uh, some things that look good on paper, uh, on the design or even in the prototype that looked good and were fun, uh, there are problems and it doesn't quite work or something's just not really you know, feeling right about it and we need the flexibility to be able to change that. Uh, and conversely, um, other things that we didn't really plan on uh, that all of a sudden are really fun or we think are really cool and we're like, oh, that's pretty awesome, let's, let's do more of that. And so we do change it uh, uh, in amongst the, the greater goal. Okay, and if people were interested in becoming a gaming developer, especially now with technology always changing, what are the leading technologies that you would advise people to learn? Um, all right, uh, for programming, um, it's learning C++ on C Sharp. Uh, there are some third-party engines that we do use as well, uh, such as Unreal Engine. Uh, we occasionally use a Unity Engine as well, depending on the project. Uh, on the art side, it's uh, you know traditional drawing, Photoshop, 3D Studio Max and Maya. These are kind of software applications you uh, want to learn. Um, as well as the game making process. You know, there's a lot to be said for uh, trying it. Make your own project, make your own demo, collaborate with some friends. Um, you know, these are the things that go a long way into uh, giving you the skills you'll need to develop video games. Okay, and for people that may be struggling to break into the industry, what advice, or how did you break into the industry, and how, what advice would you give to new people trying to get into the industry? Sure, um, the thing that goes a long way um, after your you know, uh, education uh, and learning uh, about uh, on the hard skills, I would recommend um, giving it a go. Uh, what I did was uh, I just made my own games. You know, uh, I made my own programs, my own demos, uh, and just you know, uh, 
um, showed my passion and uh, made things that I thought were cool and that I enjoyed making. So uh, if you can do that on your own or if you can do that with some friends uh, and kind of uh, get together with some like-minded people and uh, make some stuff or enter some competitions and kind of, you know, uh, whether it's doing some programming, whether it's uh, you know, doing some art stuff to build up your folio and your resume, uh, that goes a long way. Uh, when we're hiring, that's the kind of thing uh, that gets you uh, extra points when we're interviewing you. Okay, and what about the soft skills, whether it be communication skills, what are the important skills around that? Absolutely, uh, look, communication is good um, uh, to start with because there's, there, there's a lot of that. Um, just to be nice, <laughs> just to be friendly, you know, uh, listening to other people, letting other people have their opinions, taking it on, uh, being solution oriented uh, helps a lot, you know, coming up with solutions uh, instead of just getting bogged down in the problems, you know, it's, we often say, you know, um, don't tell us why it can't be done, tell us what we can do to, you know, overcome that obstacle or that problem. So, uh, yeah, a, a positive kind of mindset and mental attitude uh, really, really helps. We like to hear reasons uh, how we can get around things or how we can get over obstacles and hurdles. That is really important. So, I'm kind of talking about that, you know, your mental attitude uh, to, towards a process because it, it can be challenging at times. A collaborative, positive spirit um, goes a long way and you know that's what all the uh, people at Wicked Witch uh, have They're, that's a culture that we have here and that's what we strongly encourage all right everyone thank you so much Daniel for that what we are going to do in the next segment is pick Daniel's brain around the top three tips if you are looking to be a game developer no worries hello again I'm here to give you a few pro tips about how to get into the video games industry uh, number one the first thing you're going to need is passion you pretty well need to love video games, whether it's programming or it's artwork or it's design or it's sound or it's writing. Uh, the more passionate you are and the more you love it, that's gonna go a long way into seeing you through. The second is education. Uh, while it's not strictly um, required and you can teach yourself, Getting a, a computer science degree for programming where you probably learn languages such as C++ and C Sharp or assembly, super valuable, as well as programming principles and the underlying things on how computers and video games work. Uh, for artwork, uh, there's uh, 3D modeling, uh, design and fine arts courses that will hone your skills in Photoshop, 3D Studio Max and Maya. Uh, there's some other things like design and sound and testing uh, on packages such as Microsoft Project, Atlassian Jira for the project management side of things, um, Pro Tools for sound creation. The third thing is good old fashioned hard work and dedication. Making video games is a tough business. It uh, looks like fun and while there is lots of fun, there's ultimately a lot of hard work as well. So uh, the more exposure you can get, the more um, hobby projects you do, demos, collaborations with friends, again, in video games, in programming or in art, to kind of show uh, your dedication about going above and beyond. These are all the kinds of things we look for uh, when we hire people who are trying to get into the industry. Hopefully these few things have been helpful and good luck getting into the industry. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the Come Up Starter Kit. I had a lot of fun here at Wicked Witch Software. On the next episode, we'll be talking all things cybersecurity.